Hi, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. So in this video, we will learn chapter 1, physical quantities and measurements. Okay, so physical quantity is defined as quantity which can be measured and it can be categorized into two types which are basic quantity and derived quantity. Okay, basic quantity and derived quantity. Okay, so basic quantity is defined as quantity which cannot be derived. Which cannot be derived from any physical quantities. So we have seven types of basic quantity which are mass, length, time, current, amount of substance, luminous intensity, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One more is temperature. Okay. So, this is seven basic quantities. Okay. And another one is derived quantity. So, derived quantity is defined as quantity which, which can be expressed in terms of basic quantity. Okay. Okay, for learning outcome 1.1a, define dimension. Okay, dimension is defined as technique or method which the physical quantity can be expressed in terms of combination of basic quantities. And it can be written like this, okay, in this form. So, bracket, the physical quantity and then the bracket, okay. Or maybe in symbol. Okay. Without the bracket. Okay. So this table shows the dimension of seven basic quantities. Okay. For example, we want to write dimension for mass. So we write down bracket, mass and then bracket. Okay. Or maybe bracket, the symbol of mass. Okay, which is M, okay, so, uh, small uh, letter M, and then bracket. Okay, so the symbol is M, M, capital letter of M without the bracket. Okay, and the unit is kilogram, or symbol of the unit is kg. Okay, and then length, okay, the symbol dimension of length is capital letter L. Okay, and the unit is meter and symbol for unit meter is M. Okay, and then time. Okay, time. So, the symbol is capital letter T. The unit is second and the symbol for second is S. And then electric current. Okay, the symbol is capital letter I and the unit is ampere and... The symbol for ampere is A, capital letter A. And then temperature, theta. And the unit is Kelvin. And symbol for Kelvin is K, capital letter K. And then amount of substance. The symbol is N. And then the unit is mole. And the symbol for mole is mole. Okay. And then luminous intensity. The symbol is J. The unit for luminous intensity is candela and the symbol is CD. Okay. Now we want to proceed to learning outcome 1.2a. Define scalar quantities and vector quantities. Okay. So definition for scalar quantities is quantity which has magnitude only. Okay. For example, this statement. 
Okay, a car move for 30 km far. So, this statement has only magnitude 30 km. Okay, example of scalar quantities are distance, okay, speed, mass, time, temperature, pressure, electric current, work, energy. So, this example are for scalar quantities. They have magnitude only and no direction. And mathematical operation for scalar quantity is ordinary algebra or scalar product. Okay, scalar product. Or we may call dot. We may call as dot product. Okay. Okay, then the definition of vector quantity. Okay, vector quantity is quantity with both magnitude and direction. For example, this statement. Okay, a car move for 30 km to the north. So, it has both magnitude 30 km and direction to the north. Okay, so it has both magnitude and direction. Examples of physical quantities and vector quantities are displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, electric field, magnetic field, and magnetic field. So these are examples for vectors, vector quantities. And mathematical operation for vector quantity is vector algebra or it is vector product okay vector product or we may call as a cross product okay okay now we want to proceed to learning outcome 1.2c illustrate unit vectors okay unit vectors Unit vectors I cap, J cap, K cap. Okay, it is like this. Okay, unit vectors I cap, J cap and K cap in Cartesian coordinate. Okay. Okay, look at this one. So, this is three dimension. Okay, X axis, Y axis and Z axis. So for x axis, okay, we put i cap, okay, i cap like this, and for y axis we put j cap, and for the z axis we put k cap, okay. So unit vector is a vector with a magnitude of one, no units, and is parallel to the coordinate axis, okay. So the unit Vector notation is I cap, J cap and K cap. So, the vector can be written in terms of unit vector like this. Okay. For example, um, okay. Example R. Okay, vector R is Rx. Okay. Rx. That means R and component, X component. Rx i cap plus ry j cap plus rz k cap. Okay, so this one is vector in three dimension. Okay. Okay, look at this example. Vectors in two dimension. So, we only have x axis and y axis. For example, we have vector op. Uh, vector op. Okay, this one. Vector op. Where at coordinate. 3, 4. So, 3 at x axis and 4 at y axis. So, this vector can be written in unit vector like this. 3i cap 4 plus 4j cap. Okay. So, this is vector written in unit vector. Okay. Unit vector. Okay. Okay, and then this is examples of vector in three dimension. Uh, this one have x axis, y axis, and z axis. Okay, sometimes uh, we may draw like this: x axis at this area, and y here, and z here. Okay, 
okay it doesn't matter because this dimension sorry this uh, axis can be rotate okay so uh, for x axis okay so this, this coordinate is 2 3 5 okay coordinate uh, op coordinate of this vector is 2 3 5 that's mean uh, 2 at x axis 3 at y axis and 5 at z axis. Uh, so you can write vector of P in terms of finite vector like this. 2i okay, plus 3j plus 5k. Okay. So this is vector in terms of unit vector. Okay. This is vector written in terms of unit vector. Okay. Okay, now we can proceed to 1.2 D and E, state the physical meaning. Okay, so in this learning outcome, you have, uh, you only have to know the physical meaning of the dot product and the cross product. Okay, dot product or scalar product, okay, the formula is A dot B vector A dot, okay, this one is dot. Vector A dot vector B is equals magnitude vector A times magnitude vector B cos theta. Okay. Sometimes um, we write magnitude A like this. Okay. In modulus. Okay. A modulus means magnitude of vector A. B modulus means magnitude of vector b okay so you may write uh, magnitude of vector a right like this okay and magnitude of vector b like this so this formula is for dot product okay a crop a dot b equals to magnitude a times magnitude b cos theta where theta is angle between vector a and b all right so, dot product is a scalar quantity. So, it produces a scalar quantity. Okay. So, it has no direction. Okay. It only have a magnitude. Okay. Okay. So, vector A and B must be parallel when you want to find the dot product. If they are not, you have to resolve either one of them to make them parallel. Okay, example of dot product is work. Okay, work done, work done equals to force dot displacement. Work done equals to force dot displacement. Okay, so uh, the dot product, okay, the work done equals Fs. Okay, the magnitude F times magnitude S cos theta. So, F should be parallel to the displacement. Okay, the F should be parallel to displacement. So, you have to find uh, component of cos F which is parallel to the displacement S. Okay, so F S cos theta. Another one is power. Power equals to F dot V force dot velocity. Okay. So, it is force should be parallel to the velocity or speed. Alright. Okay. Another product of the vector are cross product. Okay. Cross product or vector product. So, the cross product produce new vector okay the cross product produce new vector which is vector quantity okay so it is defined a defined as a cross b equals to c okay vector a cross vector b equals to vector c so vector c is a new vector where the formula is a cross B equals to magnitude A times magnitude B sine theta. 
Okay, sine theta. So, magnitude of vector A can be written like this, modulus A. Magnitude of uh, vector B can be written like this, modulus B. Okay. So, theta is angle between vector A and B. Okay. So, since uh, cross product produce vector, so it has both magnitude and direction. So, it has magnitude and direction. So, we can determine the direction of the vector product by using corkscrew method or right hand grid rule. Okay. Okay. This is how to use right hand. It is easier. Okay. How to use right hand rule to identify or to determine the direction of the cross product. Okay. Look at this illustration. Okay. For example, this is vector A and then this is vector B. Okay. So, you have to point your four fingers to the direction of the vector A. For example, A cross B. Okay. So, first vector is the vector A. Okay. And then, swap the four fingers. Okay. Swap the four fingers from the first vector, which is the vector A, towards the second vector, which is the vector B. Okay. So, your thumb... Okay, your thumb shows the direction of the vector product, which is the vector C. Okay, A cross B equals to vector C. Okay, and then uh, if B cross A, B cross A. So, for B cross A, for example, B cross A. Okay, this one. So, you have to point your four fingers to the direction of the first vector which is vector B. Okay. Which is the vector B. And then you have to swap the your four fingers from the first vector, which is vector B, to the second vector, which is the vector A. So then your thumb will show the direction of the vector C. Okay. So this is the rules. A cross B will be not equals to B cross A. Okay, to be opposite direction. Okay. A cross B equals to negative vector B cross vector A. And direction of vector product C always perpendicular to the plane containing vector A and B. That's it for chapter 1. Thank you.